Let's get into it. Bourbon truffles. Yes. Super stoked. Um, basically four ingredients, if you will. So we've got our dark chocolate. This is kind of bittersweet. It's about 60%, so it's closer to semi-sweet, but whatever you have, that's what you should use. Um, and then we've got heavy cream. We're gonna bring this just to a boil, and then we're gonna pour it over our chocolate, and then we're going to let it sit. All right, so I've got my bourbons ready. I don't need it yet, but she's ready. And I'm just gonna do a little pinch of salt into my chocolate. Not a lot, because it's not a ton of chocolate. So just give it a little pinch, and we wait. I'm gonna make sure that it is boiling all the way in the inside, in the center, just like a so. So once it has come to a rolling boil, then you know it's hot all the way through, and we can take that and pour it over our chocolate. I like to, you know, kind of pour it everywhere. This is enough to cover, so you don't really have to stress, but you do want to make sure that you have a nice, maybe thin layer of chocolate, so don't choose a bowl that's teeny tiny. Um, and then we're gonna let it sit, because we are going to let the heavy cream do the heavy lifting for us. Yes. So all we're doing is making a ganache, let's be honest. Uh, so we're just gonna let this sit here for about a minute, and then it will whisk together perfectly, and it will emulsify, and you'll be like, was that even any work? All right, we're back. Now, you can kind of poke in there and see if they feel softened, and if they do, then you're good. So go ahead and start in the center. This is a teeny tiny amount of ganache. Is my whisk choice excellent? No. Smaller whisk would have been better here, but it's fine. So just keep whisking in the center until it starts to emulsify. It's gonna take about as long as it takes for you to be like, I don't think this is gonna work. And then all of a sudden, boom. Like a so. You're like, oh yes it is. Look at that shiny ganache forming. And then you kind of gradually work your way out until you've gotten all the way out to the edges. You do not want to aggressively whisk or switch directions because that will, that could break the emulsion. Chocolate is very sensitive, okay? It's sensitivo. You wanna give it, you know, everything it needs and nothing more. So just go ahead and make sure that you've gotten all your lumps out. If you didn't maybe melt it enough, then you can, um, you could put this over some simmering water and just very gently heat it on the bottom. Um, but you know, that also might break your emulsion. Now, if your emulsion does break, what do you do? Great question. Um, you can add a little bit of cold cream and whisk that in and that should help emulsify it together. If that doesn't work, well, then you're screwed. And you should either just use it or not, but it's gonna taste the same. So, it depends on what you're doing with it. Our ganache is formed and I'm gonna add our bourbon. Could you add less bourbon? Yes. Could you add something that isn't bourbon? Yes. You could add juice if you want, maybe reduced juice. So just go ahead and get that in there. You do want to add a liquid though, because this is, the amount of liquid is, is factored into the ratio of the ganache. So if you don't add any additional liquid, then you're, you're going to have very hard truffles. She's gorge. Okay, so we are going to set this aside to cool. Not all the way, because what we're going to do, the way you could scoop your truffles if you'd like, but in order to get them nice and beautifully shaped, there's, I mean, it's kind of a pain in the tush, but it is worth the extra effort because you're going to have these beautifully circular, perfectly spherical bonbons, and everyone's going to be like, oh my gosh, did you buy those? And you're like, no, I made these yesterday in like 10 minutes. It was easy. Stick around. All right, so we are going to put a tip in a piping bag. This is a Ateco 807. You can use anywhere between a five and an eight. Shove it in there. This makes a nice seal at the bottom so that your whatever you're putting in your piping bag doesn't fall onto your counter. Yes. Place it into some sort of vessel, a cup, or container of sorts. Set aside. And now we wait. I'm gonna cover this with a piece of plastic wrap uh, so it doesn't get a skin from the heavy cream. And then I'm gonna check back in. It's probably gonna take 
given the room temperature, 20 minutes. You could speed this up and put it in the fridge, but I wouldn't suggest that because if it cools too much and then you start to pipe it, um, you could break your ganache and you'll have like a, an ever so slight um, breakage, like a, you'll have like a broken filling, uh, which isn't the end of the world. It's still all gonna taste delicious, but if you care, now you don't. Now, our ganache has been cooling um, for about 40 minutes. Um, it's still like on the warm, it's still warm to the touch, like it's about body temperature right now. Um, so it could cool a little bit longer if you have the time, um, but I'm impatient. So you're gonna transfer that to the piping bag that we so lovingly made. Alrighty. And now, a little loosey-goosey. Ah! That is why we sealed the bottom. It's obviously, as I said, still a little loosey-goosey, right? So it's going to come out faster than it might if you had let it cool just a touch longer. Basically, you're going to pipe them about the size that you want, and then you're not going to stress about it. They look like Hershey Kisses right now. If that's what you're going for, and then you're done. Just kidding. Although that would be super cute. I'm not gonna lie. Last bit. Boom. Et voila. We're done. Just kidding. We're not done. <laughs> uh, we are gonna take this. We're gonna cover it with plastic wrap, and we're gonna pop it in the refrigerator. It needs to chill about 20 minutes. Um, you want them to be solid. Um, they're not going to be hard hard, but they're going to be solid enough that we can kind of roll them and place them back on the tray. And if we're working quickly, then they should have a nice smooth surface. All right, our truffles have set, like the ganache is basically set, it's firm to the touch. I mean, it's not hard, you don't want it to be hard because you want a nice soft, uh, tender, like meltable inside. Um, now. If you have hot hands, just know you might have to work in batches because it's definitely going to start to melt on your hands. So you're basically going to, gloves would be awesome here, but I don't have any. Pick them up, roll them, place them back down. Nice little cute little truffles. Now if they get too soft or your hands get too sticky, then you just go ahead and pop them back in the fridge and do the rest. The chocolate on your hands is also not going to help so even if your hands haven't gotten warm yet or the truffles haven't gotten warm you might just want to wipe off your hands all right and now we have spheres and i'm going to pop them back in the fridge and let them chill again um, and in the meantime i am going to temper some chocolate if you want to learn how to do that you can follow the video tutorial up there and i'll show you so it should be noted that you don't have to enrobe or coat these in tempered chocolate. You can actually put these back in the fridge and then roll them in powdered sugar or toasted um, powdered nuts um, or in cocoa powder so that you can get that nice beautiful exterior that's perfectly finished without actually having to dip them in tempered chocolate. So know that option is there for you too. All right. so. Bonbons are ready to be dipped. Don't forget, you can totally just roll these. You can skip this step. This is like not critical. Um, but we're here now and my chocolate is in temper. And if you would like to dip your bonbons in tempered chocolate, you can totally watch my video on that up there. Um, or if you have chocolate that's in the chocolate bar and it isn't bloomed or hasn't melted or anything, you can just kind of melt that down gently and lovingly and not let it get too hot. Um, and you can use that, it should still be in temper. And you can still do what I did here where I obviously tested my chocolate to make sure it was in temper. So you see that it's set, it is beautiful and shiny and there's no kind of like tackiness to it or streaks because I moved it along as I uh, was cooling it. So I like to just do one at a time, right? Like I'm gonna dip it in there and then I'm gonna fish it out. They make special like, um, forks and like things for dipping bonbons. You can totally do that. Um, I, 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 you know, one more thing in my kitchen is not on the table for me. So I like to take it and go ahead and kind of slide it off. Now, don't forget, so these are actually really cold. 
So they are going to lower the temperature of your dipping chocolate. So you're actually, as you dip, you are, you know, kind of cooling your chocolate, so to speak. So just keep that in mind. So what I'm doing is I'm like tapping it on the side to get the extra chocolate before I push it onto my baking sheet. So I have acetate on my baking sheet. You could put parchment down. Uh, whatever you do is, is totally fine. Um, but you do want to work quickly. Um, I am going to have to reheat my chocolate here in a second because it is so cold in here. And these little, little bonbons are freezing. But what you can see um, is that our chocolate over here is setting beautifully. You see this right here? That is some beautifully tempered chocolate bonbon stuff right there happening. Mm -hmm, sure is. Welcome to chocolate work, my friends. We're in it. We are in it. All right, so we are done dipping and we are ready to roll in cocoa powder. You could leave them like this. They are beautiful like this, but I kind of just want this array of cocoa powder and powdered sugar and like unrolled ones. And so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> so all we're gonna do is take this and dip it and then kind of just, you know, go back and forth to get like a nice little pattern on top of some of them. I'm choosing my favorites because, you know, that's, why not? Now you want your, when you're doing this part, if you're going to do this, you do want your chocolate to be in like the top of the working range because you want it to be a little bit more fluid. You don't want to try and do this with like almost cooled chocolate. You'll, you'll find that you are, you know, in a, in a world of hurt. All right, so we've drizzled and we've got our bowls of cocoa powder and powdered sugar. Again, of course, all of this is optional. You can 100% not dip these and just roll them in cocoa powder or confectioner sugar and everyone would still be in awe. They're super delicious on their own, but here we are. Now I'm just gonna just, I don't know, I'm just gonna take a couple and, you know, just roll. <laughs> now if you are doing this, if you want like a really thick, nice coating and not just kind of like a dusting, then you're gonna need to do this before the chocolate completely sets. Um, obviously that's a whole timing situation, but you know, you do you. And now you've made bourbon chocolate bonbons. And all that's left for us to do is, it's time to try! Yes! I'm super stoked! You're like, calm down. Maybe I've already had one or two, I don't know. Taste as you go. These are the things that chefs do. But, mm. Oh, it has a nice, crunchy, tempered chocolate shell. And then like, this super soft, creamy, bourbon chocolate inside. It's not, the bourbon is beautiful and it melts with the chocolate in such a, like, a luscious way. It's not overpowering. It's just really wonderful. <laughs> Don't really know how else to say that. It's really wonderful.